times. In other countries in Southeast Asia, stomach cancer is more common than it is in Europe or in the Western world. And the reasons for that are, are complicated, presumably thought to be somehow due to dietary changes, not dietary changes present today almost, but things that have evolved over many, many generations. And that's why many people who study stomach cancer always find themselves learning from our patients and our colleagues in Asia on how to treat these cancers. So if it's caught early and very early, uh, stage one, stage two, usually we recommend surgery. And often surgery is sufficient and that's maybe all we need. Sometimes all we need is surgery to remove the tumor and then there is no longer any treatment needed in some cases. It's found early, we can do an operation, we can cure the patient with surgery and we don't need any more chemo and we don't need any targeted therapy or anything like that. In patients who have a little more advanced disease, what we call stage three, usually patients get a combination of chemotherapy and surgery because that's been shown to help reduce the risks that the cancer will never come back in the long run. So it's usually a combination of chemo and surgery for stage three. For stage four, which unfortunately means that the cancer is now spread beyond the stomach itself, it's often a combination of chemotherapy sometimes targeted therapy if they have a targeted therapy appropriate sometimes immunotherapy if they have an immunotherapy drug associated with them so it's a combination of all of these depending on what stage the cancer is found i mean nobody likes to get chemo uh, unfortunately in this cancer chemo is still the backbone it's still the mainstay and and, and sometimes immunotherapy is added to it Sometimes, and I, I do mean rarely, in about 3 or 4% of stomach cancer, we do not need chemo. We can just use immunotherapy treatments. It's only 3 or 4% of people that are sensitive to immunotherapy alone. Uh, we do have some chemo that's required, not often a lot, and not often difficult chemo, but some chemo may be necessary. And I would uh, keep that in mind that it's important to have balance. Chemotherapy has gotten a lot better. It's not as bad as people think it is. There are no doubt that it is significantly better than it's ever used to be. And by that, I mean both the drugs work better because of the way we dose them, and also keeping in mind that the side effects are better because we're able to understand the side effects, we're able to treat the side effects, we're able to prevent a lot of the nausea, prevent a lot of the fatigue, prevent a lot of the upset GI feeling. So, so these are common things that used to be associated with chemotherapy and are still a little bit, but, but not nearly as much as, as before. Uh, we have to uh, keep in mind that in 2022, we are much better at, at supportive care, which is helping patients with these side effects than we, when we ever were before. Clinical trials are not guinea pigs. We do not use that term. Clinical trials, almost all of them are adding a bonus on top of what you would get. So meaning almost all clinical trials are designed to improve on what you would get from your local doctor, to improve on what you would get wherever you were in the country uh, for your treatment of cancer. The clinical trials, the majority of them will add a new drug or a new technique or a new way to study that cancer beyond what is already recognized as the standard. We almost never, very rarely, do placebo trials anymore where patients are not given a real drug. That's very rare, especially in this country, to be fair. Now, sometimes those trials are done at the last step of a drug, but, but oftentimes that's not the case. So I, I always encourage our patients to at least think about clinical trials, think about the value that they're getting. They are getting both the, hopefully something meaningfully new to help with their cancer and also something that will help the future. Stomach cancer is a very critical cancer to diagnose early. So unfortunately, during the pandemic, when we had many, many patients who had delays to be seen by doctors, we did have some patients who, who had a delay in their diagnosis because they didn't make it to the doctor on time. And, and we saw this in stomach cancer and we saw this in other cancers too. What we have now realized 
post-pandemic is that we should get back to the way it was before. We should be seeing our patients quickly. We should be helping them quickly. We should be trying to get them to be seen quickly and assessed quickly and get the tests ordered in order to start the treatment. So I think we've now realized that, uh, you know, the pandemic, besides for the people who got sick from the COVID, also, you know, caused some delays in diagnosis, and we're glad that that's over. <laughs>